from 10 cents, dollar cents per graft in India, <laughs> all the way to, I've heard, what, 12, 13 dollars per graft in US. So obviously it's uh, as much money as you have, you can, you can pay for it. There can be always someone that will charge you this much. But uh, in my opinion, it, like looking at the cost itself, it's uh, mistake number one that I did, I'm sure you did, and uh, we're all looking at the cost because we're thinking for ourselves, okay, can I afford it or not? Which is fine, like we're not all millionaires, but the price does not dictate the quality, sadly. There are plenty of uh, places that are charging so much and you, the, the quality is just rubbish. And then there are other places that are really cheap. They're really, really cheap and they're providing pretty good quality. So there are even like a places in Turkey that are like 3,000 euros and in my opinion, from what I've seen, some of the work is done, it's pretty comparable to like a higher end level, you know, surgeons. Okay, so I would go with why did you not pick that, let's say you found that clinic in Turkey that was 3000 euros or so that you felt like was, was yeah. delivering pretty good results. So why did you not save the money and go to them? Well, that's a tricky one. <laughs> I'll tell you why. The problem is, while I'm saying they're pretty good, they're not perfect. And nobody's perfect and it's fine. And I always say, you have to find your surgeon. You have to find the surgeon that you think is the best for you, for your case, for your situation, uh, who has a plenty of experience with your type of hair, with your type of hair loss pattern, etc. So there are really so many like uh, different situations. There are some surgeons that are more um, conservative they're gonna have a more conservative hairlines, uh, less density, but still looking really good and natural work. But some people will not like this approach. Some people would prefer a bit more aggressive, more density, like a, a bit lower hairline. Both things have its place. If you're Norwood 7, you, it would be a bit delusional thing that you're gonna get like a low straight boxed, you know, hairline, like vice versa. If you're Norwood 2, what's, I would not go to a conservative, you know, hair transplant surgeon, personally. But again, it's up to individual. From what I've seen, I, I'm not a big fan of their hairlines, for example, or the way they extracting, although they like uh, spacing in two days extraction, which is amazing. I always think it's best to uh, slow down extractions as much as possible. So for example, in my case, I had 3,659 grafts extracted via FUE, and it's been done over two days, two surgical days. So. On the first day was around 2,800 and the second day 1,800. So extractions and implantations following by. And I think that's the best way to go about it. It's a bit more safer because the surgeon have the time to actually go in and pick the right graft. Uh, be careful with the angle. So they're gonna be less, you know, transaction rate and etc. So basically you're gonna have the best chance possible to, you know, for a good hair transplant. And how many sur surgeries was your surgeon performing the day that you had your surgery done? Uh, me? Uh, myself? I was the only one patient, <laughs> obviously. You were the only one? Of okay. course. I mean, he was doing extractions, he was doing implantations, and he was doing 1,800 uh, grafts per day spaced in, what, two, 10 hours? 9 hours? So, <laughs> so there is no way that if you went to that same clinic that you're talking about, I'm sure in Turkey that does the, the 3000 euro hair transplant. So they are utilizing a technician to extract and they're doing two patients a day. So again, it's not that bad. So that the, is the same always technician that extracting the grafts and the same surgeon who is implanting the grafts. Uh, but like, again, so it can be consistent, which is great, I really like, but, and I always say they are the best in their price range. You cannot find any better because other ones yeah. are just doing 20 surgeries a day and I don't care how popular they are on the forums. You know, every single, if you're going through the numbers, you're gonna find the good, good, good results. Do 1000, you know, surgeries, you're gonna find one amazing one produced by them, you know? But uh, what are the chances yep. you're gonna be one of them? <laughs> Pretty slim. I mean, it's, uh, you know, up to individual. So that's again, in terms of cost, that's why it costs more or less. Like you said, there are definite ones that, that also aren't that great, that also charge a lot. <laughs> so it's not, it's definitely not always comparable. Here's the reason why I personally, at this point, would not just choose to go to a random surgeon in another country. I'm going to use China since so we can stop talking about <laughs> Turkey for a minute. And uh, I love China. Uh, I'm just using them as an example. 
I said I speak Chinese. Yeah, well, I, I, was, I was thinking, <laughs> did you just say some random three words? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I love China and my daughter's half Chinese, but I'm going to use China as an example because it's a good example of places where things are done in volume as well. Um, and I just, I'm tired of talking about Turkey. If I was going to go have a hair transplant and I know that this, this area, you know, does fairly good work, but I don't have a way of like going there and checking on it very well right and this is my one shot that i've got at like at getting this right so let's say that i want to get a beautiful painting of mount everest put up in my living room and it's going to be there for the rest of my life i, I know this painting is going to hang in my living room forever it's going to be this gorgeous big painting okay i have options i can get this done by this a Chinese place that just it's a big warehouse and they've got a ton of different people there that all can paint and you know what they're all painters they're all like professional painters I don't really know who's going to paint the painting but I know that like it's going to be done and I know that I've seen some paintings that they've that they've done that have come from this same warehouse right where they where they do all these copycat paintings so I have that option and I know again that they've the work turns out okay, but I don't know which one of the 50 artists that works in this Chinese warehouse doing paintings is going to be painting my painting that's going to hang in my living room forever. But I can get this done at half the price. Or I know that two states over, there's this painter, and I've seen the painting that's, that he, he's done of mountains. And I've seen painting after painting that I'm sure is done by this individual painter. So I know what every one of his paintings looks like. You know, I know what his style of painting is. And I can go there and I can even talk to that, that painter and like given him an idea of what I want my painting to look like. And he can give me feedback of, of what it might look like or show me some similar paintings that he's done of Mount Everest or of another Mount Fiji or whatever. For me, if that's a painting that's going to hang up in my living room for the rest of my life, that's the way that I want to go about getting that painting done. I might get a beautiful painting done by some person at that other warehouse in China at half the price, and it might look just as good. But if that's going to hang in my living room for the rest of my life, that's not the chance that I want to make. And how much more so, yeah, how much more so with surgery, with permanent surgery that can never be redone. I can't hang another painting up there, you know? That's the point that I'm at, is like, the only way that I would go to another country and get something done um, personally and I've also lived in the Philippines. I've traveled to like 90 to 95 countries now. So I'm not like anti other countries. I, I love other countries, right? And I get surgery done, for instance, in the Philippines, because I know an excellent surgeon in the Philippines. I've, I know people that he's worked on personally. I've seen his work personally. So like I would go there, like unless I have a relationship with an individual surgeon and I know their work that they do, then I would not consider going to another country to get that surgeon work on me. Does that make sense? Yeah, but uh, you know what? Most of the people, I already see them saying it. Uh, oh, but I don't really care who is the surgeon, whatever. Like, it's like, I don't have hair. What's the worst that can happen? I don't have the hair. The, uh, I don't have hair anyways. I was talking to, um, actually, my girlfriend's sister because she talked about me to their friend that uh, losing uh, hair and he wants to go to Turkey to get a hair transplant. Sorry, again, Turkey, but you know, like we cannot go around it. It's like the capital of the, you know, hair transplant. So this guy wants to go to some, he, he like I uh, said, couple of, you know, clinics, how much he gonna pay. And I like already, it's okay. And she's saying, oh, like, what's the worst that can happen? He doesn't have any hair anyways. And I was like, okay, let me show you a couple of pictures. So I showed her a couple of pictures of the donor, of how the potential recipient area can look like, both. Uh, I, I showed a picture of a corpse. <laughs> I mean, you can die. We know people yeah, died. You absolutely, you absolutely can die, yes. I mean, even just there's been a person that, one person that died of too much lidocaine, lidocaine poisoning, because they were just numbed up too much. I mean, like my, my friend Dr. McGrath says, which is that there's no such thing as minor surgery, just minor surgeons. <laughs> And I always like that <laughs> quote. Yeah, minor surgeons indeed. It's crazy how some people really don't realize what they are getting themselves into. And like, don't get me wrong. I'm not uh, against cheap clinics. I'm not against technician clinics. Like there's so many, like if you look at uh, Hassan Wonka as an example, one of the, the best clinics in the world, in Canada. 
the technician is extracting the graft. They're not doing fancy DHI, Sapphire, if you, Ice, if you, whatever it is. They're using a regular, you know, like a... Well, actually, I think they recently changed their approach. They started implementing pens, but they've been doing for years pre-made incisions. And, like, their results are one of the best in the world. The technician itself is not a problem. I've seen plenty of results coming from a hair mills that they're doing 20 surgeries a day that are really, really good, top quality. The problem arises, what are the chances you're going to be one of them? Like, yep. okay, there's two, Absolutely. three, five teams that are amazing. They care what they do. They love what they do. What are the chances that when you're going to get there, you're going to get a brand new technician team that's going to practice on your head and you're going to be a guinea pig. Would you like to take the risk? I mean, some people don't mind. Like, that's my personal opinion and why I try to kind of explain the, you know, why you, it's best not to go to such places. But again, in the end of the day, everyone is, you know, living their own life so if that's the risk you're willing to take why not you know i kind of be glad if you're gonna work out for you we often get comments that talk about oh these greedy doctors they charge so much for for this or that and i mentioned my friend uh, dr patrick mwamba who did my beard extractions and he only has only one tech that's worked with him i think it's like 10 or 12 years this one tech has worked with him and he, so dr mwamba has a surgical clinic in both Brussels and Atlanta. So he flies back and forth every two weeks. He does two weeks in Brussels, two weeks in Atlanta. And so he flies his tech with him, both from Brussels and Atlanta, first class together, both of them back and forth. And now you go, oh, you, you at first thought you could say, oh, well, look at that. He's so extravagant. He flies them first class. <laughs> well, one, wouldn't you want your surgeon flying first class in to if he's going to do your surgery the next day? I mean, absolutely. You wouldn't want him skipping on money so he doesn't get a good sleep and his tech get a good sleep. But the upside of that is you're thinking about you're paying for this tech that's been with him for 10 plus years. So you're paying for all of that experience. If it wasn't important to him to have that person with him that he can trust that's been through this process thousands and thousands of times, why would he spend the money? Why wouldn't he just be greedy and just go, oh, I'll just get like another tech there in Brussels and I'll, I'll use, use one here whenever they're available. No, he's absolutely not going to do that because he cares about his patients because he knows that every aspect of that surgery is an important aspect and it all needs to go correctly for every surgeon to turn out uh, every surgery to turn out right it comes down to those percentages right like you want somebody who's batting a thousand you know that's what, in baseball we have a thousand is you hit all the balls <laughs> you know all of them are a hit if you get somebody who's batting 400 or even seven 750 what's the chances that you're not the hit, you know? You want somebody that's gonna get a hit every single time because you're gonna be one of those balls. And if you're not a hit, it's yeah. over, that's it, right? Like w what you're gonna do then? I think in the end of the day, like there are a variety of surgeons out there, especially like right now in the internet age, it's so easy to find. You just got to do your due diligence. You have to research, you have yeah. to spend some quality time not going on a Google, and typing, you know, best hair transplant, you know, in uh, this or that area. No, that's not that's not how Google works. Google is going to feed you whatever you're asking, but that's uh, they're going to feed you probably a clinic name that paid the most for advertisement. There are gems out there. If you're really on a budget, you still can find. There are different, there are good clinics and surgeons that are producing really decent results on a, day, on a regular basis. Almost every, uh, let's say, uh, financial bracket. The more you spend, I do think your available excellent clinics sort of go up. So again, there are still there are still bad clinics that charge a lot of money, you know, but as you increase the amount of money that you have to spend, your available options just go up, right? I it mean, is. even just like buy, buying a, a pair of jeans, like you can buy like a good pair of jeans for... $20. But if you have $150 to spend on a pair of jeans, you have a lot more options for good pairs of jeans, you know, that you can try on. Exactly. So and you, you can still can, buy you can, really yeah. crappy jeans, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, exactly. So just figure out your maximum budget. And once you figure out your maximum budget and then figure out how, how much you can save for the next year, and that's going to be your maximum budget. <laughs> what, what I'm trying to say, don't yeah. rush into it. If you cannot afford a really good hair transplant surgeon, the best way to, to go about it is just to wait. Hair transplant will always gonna be there. I know one guy, come, uh, he 
contacted me personally, privately, and he he went to the chip clinic. He paid two thousand, uh, roughly two thousand euros for a you know, transplant, standard price. Uh, he got pretty bad, like a hairline. His hairline looks feminine, like no joke. It's wow. r round, sup su like super densely packed with the double, triple squats even in the hairline. It looks terrible. Wow. The guy, the guy has to shave, like you know, to create this little bit of a recession. Uh -huh. What are the options for him right now? Like he has to remove these grafts, you know, if you think about yeah. it. And the same, like it can be either FET or can be FUE. Most of the time, gonna be FUE, but because they're so densely packed, you have to do it over uh, two or three surgeries. Otherwise, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna just make one big hole because you know the skin tissue is just gonna break. He needs right now to pay ten to fifteen thousand euros to one of the relatively good priced surgeons to repair it. His initial work for two thousand. So like, if you don't choose pro properly, you might end up paying ten or even fifteen times more to repair what what could have been done in a you know in a good way in the first in the first place let's use brain surgery if you Ooh, I love if you were going to get brain brain surgery you know and you knew that you only had one shot to fix your brain would you think about the price at all you wouldn't like at all you would just think who is the best brain surgeon i only have one brain and if if i if i screw this up i'm dead so you of course you wouldn't think about price no matter what it costs you would go to the best brain surgeon right and so that's this is surgery too well but david i i wouldn't wake up anyway so you know what's the <laughs> <laughs> they're always this gonna... time you have to wake up so it's worse <laughs> i wouldn't know if it was successful or not i wouldn't wake up anyway you know like one of my friends is uh, giving constantly this example uh, he had an easier surgery and he was telling like listen i was I was doing some research, not as much as for hair transplant. The field is regulated quite a lot compared to hair transplant yeah. uh, field. So, but he would not want some uh, random unknown technician to do his knee surgery. Imagine, and people are doing it on a daily basis with their hair because, and yeah, the problem is because they don't know what was the outcome. Well, I don't have hair anyways.